Hello, fine people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soul scientist. And today we're going to fill up this galvanized raised bed sent to me by sent to me by Sprout Gardens. So if you want to grab one of these, it's not an affiliate link, but it is a Canadian company. So rumor has it shipping is a heck of a lot cheaper than the American beds out there, like the birdie beds. And I can't remember what the other really popular one is, but we're going to look at what is supposed to go in the bottom of these beds versus what should not go in the bottom of the beds and what exactly I'm putting in the bottom of my bed and why. So let's just jump straight into it. So one really popular addition that can be added to the bottom of the bed is cardboard. However, cardboard being added to the bottom of the actual raised bed doesn't do anything for weeds, unless if it's like a tree or shrub, that's the issue. And then again, I don't think cardboard is going to be enough to prevent against that. So the reason for me putting the uh, cardboard in the bottom of my bed is because I am going to be putting garden socks on the front of my garden bed. If you haven't seen what those are, I do have a video on them. Now, this means it's going to protect against the weeds that come at the front of the bed. So while I'm adding cardboard, I'm only adding it to the front half. There is an exception to this though, and where you may actually want to put cardboard on the bottom of the bed, not necessarily as a weed preventative, but as um, a way to help keep the soil inside of the bed until everything settles out. So I have some raised beds that are built on cement and I'll insert some video footage of what those look like. Those being uh, on interlocking bricks in particular meant a lot of soil loss could happen without some sort of a bottom to the raised bed. So in that case, I used a mixture of cardboard and landscape fabric kind of stapled up to the sides in hopes of keeping the soil inside of the actual container without having it run out the bottom, which will happen for probably the first year or two until everything settles out. This is directly on top of soil, so I don't have to worry about that as much. This may not look pretty, but all these banks back here are actually filled with leaves. So I'm gonna be putting these in the bottom of the bed on top of the cardboard. What you want to add as filler to the bottom of your bed needs to be decayed, meaning it should have no green matter. I've seen Instagram reels or stories saying that they are putting like leafy green type stuff that's not yet decomposed in there or isn't a brown carbon matter. These are things you want to avoid because it will cause things like the carbon and the nitrogen lockup that we sometimes talk about when it comes to mixing in compost or mulch into our actual soil itself. So the older the leaves, the older the compost, if you're using compost, the better. So you can see here behind me, the bed is officially pretty much filled with leaves. I don't have any wood in there, so I'm not doing like a hugaculture type version of this. But if you're doing a hugaculture or just straight leaves, some sort of um, biomass, you do want to compact it. We want to reduce the airspace as much as possible in the entire system. What happens when roots typically hit air is they tend to air prune. There's actually specific spots or pots designed for this. So we actually don't want air pruning to take place on a mass scale because it can end up actually harming our plants. So what we want to do and our yields for that matter. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to try to reduce that air porosity in this kind of really organic <laughs> type bed and we're going to compact it as much as possible. Now keep in mind this is my first time ever doing something like this. I'm a soil gal so all my beds are fully filled with soil so this is going to be a first we're going to see how it produces how it does and some things I note on it throughout the year but if I was to fill a bed the way I'm seeing a lot of people do it to save money this is how I would do it to maximize the results. So everything's as compact as what it's going to get right now ideally this would have been done before the spring flu last year and it would have been filled up and the snow would have done a lot of the work for me but unfortunately that's not the case here. So if we wanted to expedite the process of decomposition of these leaves themselves, we would want to use like a lactobacillus, for example, um, to water this in, or we could use a compost manure, something that's biologically more active typically than just a simple soil. And we would put that in between the soil, true soil layer, and then 
the leaf material underneath. Now, if we are doing like a potting soil in this, because that's what you have access to, then I would do probably a 25% compost, the rest being potting soil mix. So we'll see what happens with this. I am concerned of the pore space in the leaves themselves. And so for that reason, I'm going to be planting more leafy greens in this rather than tomatoes, peppers, or anything uh, particularly deep rooting like carrots or um, something of that nature, tillage radish, that sort of thing. So this is going to be more so a leafy green bed. It's also kind of a part shade by the time the summer comes and ends type thing. So we'll see what happens. I have my soil for this and several other beds coming here hopefully soon. So we'll fill it up at that time, but I am going to let this rest and I'm actually going to water this in the moment my husband gets the taps turned on for outside and I'm going to keep that moisture up nice and high until I do eventually put that soil in. So you guys have to let me know in the comments down below what you have done with your raised beds, what worked, what didn't. If you used hoga culture, did you enjoy it? Or did you do more of just an organic base and then soil on top? What were the woes and the issues? Um, some things you experienced, etc. and so forth. I think moisture retention is going to be very difficult in this bed, for, especially for that first year, which is why I want to try to keep that moisture really nice and high in this leaf layer until that soil does arrive. My hopes is with the moisture combined with the compaction and me stomping this out every second day with that board over there, we'll eventually get this a little bit lower so I can get a little bit more soiling here just to give the plants a little bit more room to soil hang out rather than leaf hang out. You can expect this bed to go down drastically within that first year or two as some of these leaves do decompose but that's okay because we're going to be just topping it up over time and it'll get us through our first year and then allow us to budget for the extra soil we need for the years following so thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed the video i'll talk to you guys next time bye